Now we're going to take a look at the piano roll view, otherwise known as the PRV. This is a grid based view that scrolls from left to right along the timeline. It's always associated with a MIDI or instrument track. It's accessed by pressing Ctrl 3, double clicking MIDI track, or selecting it from the main view menu. Again, it opens in the multi dock with all the advantages of quick hide and show that that offers. It consists of a menu, a drum map pane, which is displayed or hidden via the view menu, the notes pane, controller pane, and a track pane. The menu contains various options for settings for display. And to the far right, at the top, we have an independent snap to that can be set if you wish, along with the various snap options, such as MIDI landmarks. To the left of the notes pane is the graphic of a piano keyboard with pitch rising from bottom to top. Note numbers or other defined names can be displayed here instead of the piano keys, which is done by right clicking on the graphic and selecting your preference from the note names dialog box. If the MIDI track output is a drum map, the drum note pane with drum names will be displayed by default. The drum pane will be blank unless a drum map is assigned to the track. In the note pane, measure boundaries can be seen and a grid can be displayed at your preferred resolution if you wish. The time ruler runs along the top of the note display area and scrolls from left to right. Note pitch is distinguished by lanes shaded according to their position on a piano keyboard, and this is where we can draw or edit MIDI data. MIDI notes are displayed in a note pane as horizontal bars. The length of the bar defines the note duration and color shade as well as the height of the velocity tail, its velocity. Drum hits are displayed as diamonds, and in a drum map view, they look like a triangle. The controller pane, where controller lanes can be displayed, is at the bottom. Controller data, such as pitch bend wheel, velocity, etc., are displayed here as vertical lines. The controller pane can be closed, in which case, controller data is shown in the notes pane. We'll be looking at this view in much greater detail as we work with MIDI. There are several other views that we can use, and we'll take a flyby look at these now. Many of them we'll be looking at in greater detail later. All of them can be opened via the Views menu or by using their shortcut key combination. Most of them open in the multi -talk. The Matrix view with a shortcut of Alt plus 5 offers an alternative, less set, structured way of viewing and working with a project than most traditional methods do. We'll be looking at this in more detail later. The Staff view has a shortcut of Alt plus 6 and provides a way of viewing MIDI note data as standard notation. Some will find this a more comfortable way to work. It can be configured to suit the way you like to work and also contains a fretboard view and can produce guitar tab. We'll be looking at the staff view in more detail when we get to MIDI editing. The loop construction view is Alt plus seven and this gives us greater control when working with loops. Again, we'll be looking at this later. The event list, Alt plus 8, is yet another way of viewing MIDI events in great detail, and we'll explore this later in the MIDI editing section. The lyrics view, it has a keyboard shortcut of Alt plus Shift plus 1, and is for viewing lyrics. It's almost an extension of the staff view. Changes made here will be reflected in the staff view lyrics area, and vice versa. It can be used as a cue during recording as well. The video view is for viewing a video track if there's one present in the project. The big time view creates a big view of the now time. Font size is set by you, so musicians can read it from some distance if needed. The markers view is for an overview and editing of markers. Tempo shows all the tempo variations throughout a project and they can be edited here as well. Meter key for an overview of any meter and key changes within the project. SysX for an overview of SysX databanks. The navigator we looked at earlier, and this is the additional view that I spoke about then. And the surround panner is called up from the views menu, all by its shortcut of Alt plus Shift plus 9, and is one view that doesn't dock. 
It's here to display a visual representation of surround sound panning for any tracks that you have assigned to surround sound buses. As I said, many of these views we'll be looking at in greater detail as we work our way through the program. Screen sets are a very powerful feature of Sonar, and they can almost be whatever you want them to be. Think of them as 10 different views on the same project. You arrange the workspace to suit the task in hand and keep them in one of the 10 screen set slots ready for instant recall whenever you need them. Regardless of whether you set up others or not, you'll always use one screen set. As soon as a project opened, it is viewed using screen set one. To switch between them, simply press the corresponding number button, either in the screen set module in the control bar or on your QWERTY keyboard. If you find yourself rearranging the view to suit the task in hand, you'll probably find a screen set will help. Copy the one you want to change to a slot you aren't using by pressing the control key plus the relevant number. And when you've finished and want to return to the original view, just press that screen sets number key. For example, this is screen set one, and I'll copy this to screen set two by pressing control plus two. I'll make some changes to the view, hide the MIDI tracks for instance. Select all and change the edit filters using quick grouping to a gain envelope. Now I can switch back to screen set one by pressing one for general overview. But if gain automation changes are required, rather than changing filters here, I simply press two to return to that view and carry on working there. There's no need to save them as changes are automatically saved unless a screen set is locked. We'll look at that feature shortly. There's a menu for controlling them. It's in the views menu and is also available from a module in the control bar. From here, we can select a screen set to view by selecting the corresponding screen set, either from the menu or the number button. And looking at the menu, revert current screen set acts as an undo to any changes you've made since last change in screen set. And if I select this option, you'll see the screen set revert back to how it was before I made the initial copy. Here is the lock unlock current screen set that I mentioned a few moments ago, and this switches the current screen set's lock state. An icon represents whether it's locked or not. If a screen set is locked, any changes to the screen set made will not be saved. And if you switch away from a locked screen set, when you next reload it, it will be back to the original state prior to any changes you've made. Rename current screen set will only be active if the screen set is unlocked and you can change the name to something that makes sense to you. Duplicate current screen set allows us to copy screen sets as we saw earlier. If you have another project open, you'll be able to import screen sets from that one into the current project. This is a great method of loading multiple screen sets and locked screen sets are not changed, so it's possible to filter the ones that are imported or not using that feature. They're saved as part of a template, so once you have them set up to your liking, save the project as a template file, and then they'll be available in all your projects that start from that template. To give you a few ideas, I'll step through the screen sets I've set up with a very brief explanation of each. There may be some ideas here that you'll find useful. My first screen set is just an overview of the whole project with nothing hidden. Screen set two is audio only with no MIDI tracks visible. And that's in the console view as well as in the track view. Conversely, screen set three is MIDI only. Screen set four is tracks only with the track view and console view showing only the tracks. Screen set five it's just a bus view, exactly the same, but showing only buses. Screen set six is my sends view. The only widget visible in the track view at the top is a sends, allowing multiple sends to be seen, while a console view is used for track navigation. Seven is my mix down view with both tracks and buses in view, mainly as a console view. Eight is an editing view for clip manipulation, while still being able to see track levels via a small console view. Nine is an editing view where I just need to change the edit filter to the data I want to work with and each track is ready maximized and switched to using the minimized console view at the bottom here. Finally, screen set 10 is very similar but set for comping using the lanes in view. 
You'll see some of these screen sets in use as the videos progress, and I'll demonstrate how to create some of them later.